Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States Armed Forces operates by far the largest fleet of combat aircraft in the world. The current combined inventory accounts for 14,000 military fleet, including airlift and cargo, fighter and attack, as well as air refueling and special operations forces. But what happens when an aircraft is no longer in use and gets decommissioned? Most of the grounded planes find their way to the so-called Boneyard, an aircraft desert storage facility in Tucson, Arizona. The Boneyard is part of the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group at Davis-Monthan Air Force Base. It is where the U.S. government agencies, such as NASA, U.S. Navy, Air Force, and others move their decommissioned planes to be taken apart. About 5,000 retired military aircraft and other equipment are spread over 2,600 acres of land within the facility. The staff of 550 civilian and military personnel works hard to preserve the aircraft for possible use in the future. About 400 aircraft are in-processed annually for storage, and about the same number is out-processed for return to the active service, either as remotely controlled drones or sold to friendly foreign governments. The Boneyard formulates an extensive process that helps save every last dollar of the taxpayer's money spent on the planes. Its history goes back to the end of World War II and has been in service for over 70 years. The planes damaged from the battlefields, as well as those that had signs indicating potential use in the future, were moved to the boneyard for proper disposal and other works. By 1962, all other government storage facilities were closed, with air fleet surplus consolidating in Tucson, making the boneyard the largest in the world. The climate of the area was a natural choice, with low humidity in the 10 to 20% range, infrequent rains of 11 inches annually, hard alkaline soil, and high altitude of 2,550 feet. All these allow the aircraft to be naturally preserved for cannibalization or possible reuse. Additionally, the geology of the land allows moving the aircraft around without having to pave the storage areas. The boneyard has a runway for the aircraft to make their final landings. In 1925, the city of Tucson acquired land southeast of town for a dedicated runway. 
the original size was expanded to convert the field from a B-24 to a B-29 training base in 1944. Later on, the new 11,500-foot runway was completed to accommodate the largest aircraft and extended again to the current 13,600 feet in 1956. Most of the planes to be stationed at Boneyard have a recorded service period under their mileage, with the recognition of the time served. An aircraft gets an official send-off in a retirement ceremony. The event is traditionally organized at the runway at various airports and air bases, depending on the last operational home of the aircraft. Dave Pompton Air Force Base, Arizona. 47 years, 53 days. Proceed directly to Davis Pompton Air Force Base, Boneyard. Other planes present at the ceremony are paraded on both sides of the runway, coupled with air crew and maintainers to pay their last respects through their salutes of honor. The salute of honor lasts through the entire takeoff from the runway. In the air, the retiring aircraft moves around to signify the start of the retirement journey as the teams involved in the ceremony celebrate. The aircraft, whose parts can be cannibalized for the flying fleet, are designated as canbirds. After in-processing, the vehicles are given a treatment of spray lat, short for sprayable latex, a two-stage sealing process covering gaps and holes and generally blocking the intrusion of moisture or wildlife. The coat is critical in reducing the degradation of the aircraft under the desert heat. Given the white coating, interior temperatures remain within 15 degrees of the ambient air temperature. The spray lat runs about $550 for a five gallon bucket, a sizable investment that pays back in preservation of valuable parts that might not be available anywhere else. In the summer season, when the temperatures exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit, the spray lat has to be applied before 10 a.m. only, or it simply won't stick. Most fighter aircraft need about 50 hours of labor to be prepared for storage. It's 80 hours for helicopters because a box has to be built to protect their rotor heads. Big aircraft such as the B-52 can require up to 300 hours for mothballing. The Boneyard is more than a junkyard of planes for parts and scrap, since it is used as a training facility from time to time. The rationale behind such training is based on the fact that it provides a practical experience for the trainees able to use the aircraft on site. Active air personnel from across the world visit the Boneyard for crash-damaged or disabled aircraft training. The goal is to educate active duty and guardsmen and reservists affiliated with the aviation industry on systemic approaches to plane operational recovery mechanisms. The last training at davis monthan brought together 51 government employees from 28 states. The trained crew members are usually tasked with passing down the skills and knowledge acquired from the training to their colleagues.
The training ensures that crashed planes are salvaged if possible, and that the evidence relating to the crash is preserved for investigative purposes in determining the cause of the accident. Within the recovery course, the students demonstrate how they would wear protective gear during the recovery and use the necessary recovery tools, such as a rescue saw and the rapid procedural removal of wreckage. With crash recovery training, a crashed aircraft can be salvaged for parts or even brought back to service. The Boneyard comprises different kinds of aircraft, from contemporary models to historic ones. Some of the renowned aircraft of the days found at the Boneyard include the B-17s, B-24s, and the B-25s. The B-36 is also present and regarded as the last remaining of four of the aircraft, so as the B-29s most of which have been brought in for storage and regeneration. Out of the collection of the historic aircraft at davis monthan the Boeing B-52A is the oldest in existence. All the early Gemini, Mercury, and Apollo astronauts including Neil Armstrong, were dropped from this plane during their time. The Boneyard is a custodian of the U.S. Air Force history, having a record of the evolution process of the U.S. Air Force. Another remarkable feature of the Boneyard is the davis monthan Heritage Flight Training. The event was created in 1997 to recognize the 50th anniversary of the United States Air Force and has taken place annually around February or March since then. In an official ceremony, Air Combat Command Demonstration Teams are lining up on one side of the ramp opposite their civilian counterparts. Flying old and new planes close together is a tricky business. The A-10, for instance, is designed to fly comfortably at about the speed of the prop planes. But much faster aircraft like the F-35 or the F-16 are more stable at higher speed. So it takes practice to hold them back and stay in formation with the aircraft from World War II, Korean, and Vietnam era. The aircraft participating in heritage flight are different every year featuring F-68 Sabre, P-38 Lightning, and the P-51 Mustang, among others. F-35 and the F-22 are the ones making appearances every year, demonstrating how historic and modern planes share skies. The goal of the event is both to raise awareness of the Air Force mission and commemorate its history, as well as honor the men and women who have served and continue to serve. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. 
See you next time.